Homeopathic medicines are made by diluting things in the same way that you dilute cordial. But when you dilute orange cordial to make a cup of orange cordial, you dilute it by about one in five. You put in maybe an inch of cordial and then five inches of water. When you dilute something to make a homeopathic treatment, you dilute it by about one in a hundred. So one drop of the actual substance in a hundred drops of water. And then you take one drop of that and put that in a hundred drops of water. And you do that 30 times, or sometimes even more. You do it so much, the dilution is so great, you can, you can think of a, a homeopathic dilution as being roughly the same as one molecule of the substance that your homeopathic preparation is made of in the middle of a sphere of water that's roughly the size of the distance from the Earth to the Sun. That is a very, very, very dilute substance. And homeopaths can only argue that that is effective by invoking some kind of magical principles. And, and, and that's one of the major problems with homeopathy. But the biggest problem with homeopathy is that when you test it in the real world, it just doesn't work. The way you test if a treatment works or not is by doing a randomised control trial. So you take 100 people who all have a medical problem, then you divide them into two after they've been seen by the homeopaths. Half of them get the homeopathic pill that the homeopath gave them. The other half, at the last minute, have their prescription for whatever the homeopath chose switched so that they just get dummy sugar pills that haven't been treated with the magical process of homeopathy. And when you do that, overall, looking only at the fair tests of homeopathy, you find that the people getting the homeopathic pills don't do any better than the people getting the plain old sugar pills. The placebo effect is about people getting better when they take a sugar pill, a pill that has no medicine in it at all, just because they have a belief or an expectation that they'll get better. And it's something that's been researched quite extensively by scientists. So we know, for example, that two sugar pills have a bigger effect than one sugar pill, even though none of these pills have got any actual medicine in them. We know that having an injection of salt water to treat your pain is more effective as a painkiller than taking a sugar pill, even though there's no medicine in either of those treatments. And that shows the amazing power of the mind. But then there's the second question, the sort of ethical question, the moral question. Is it all right to deceive patients in order to help them get better? And that's something that only you can decide on.